body. Oh my gosh, Corinne, we're matching. We're matching. And because in episode 208, we were trying to telepathically communicate and here we are. And we didn't read it. each other's minds, but but we read in each other's intentions and that was to to put on A something fuzzy like teddy. this. Yeah. Wow. Here we go. This is two girls, one ghost. Two girls, one ghost. And uh, two days ago was both Valentine's Day and our half anniversary, Sabrina. A happy half anniversary. Five and a half years. Five and a half years. Damn. Of the podcast. Also, many oh, yeah. more of our friendship. <laughs> our names. That's Corinne. I'm Sabrina. Hey. Yes. We're on yes. YouTube. Check us out if you want to see our matching sets. Um, mm hmm. Uh, well, in that regard, Corinne, I just need to say something. I freaking love you. I freaking love you. Okay, cool. Glad we're on the same and page. And we love all of you guys too. <laughs> yes, we really that's do. true. This is just a love fest. This episode is, is the love fest. You know what's funny is there's been a lot of stuff on social media about parasocial relationships and and everybody reminding people that like the people you watched on TikTok or your favorite podcasters or whatever that it feels one-sided or that it is one-sided people are like it's parasocial but i feel like you and i have parasocial relationships with, with all our listeners. listeners yeah and too with social media like we know a lot about what's going on in people's lives we know i know who's pregnant who's getting married who went on an amazing vacation yeah we love we seeing your wedding you. invites in our po box. yeah like we I mean, it kind of goes both ways here yeah. I don't know if that's healthy, but we stalk but, you. So You know what? We love you. Wait, speaking of we pregnancy, um, on Encounters uh -oh. 166 uh, in like on YouTube, someone commented or Eliza commented, and this made me laugh. My mother saw the koala that gets hot and gasped. Oh my gosh, she's pregnant. Now I'm waiting for the announcement because my mom is rarely ever wrong about pregnancy. And I <laughs> promise I am not. <laughs> Oh my god. No. Uh, Wait, I have to tell you too what? that we went out to Brian and I went out to dinner with some good family friends of mine. They're mm -hmm. in their like late sixties, early seventies, and I've known them for a long time and they're very close to my family. And they hadn't ever met Brian before and so they wanted to meet him before our wedding. So we all went out to dinner. And nice. I think Brian was a little bit taken aback by just how direct my conversations are with them. Because they said, do you want kids? I said, yeah, we do. And they said, when? And I was like, well, I mean, we're going to get married this time. We're not going to go on a honeymoon for another like many months after that. So I guess anything would be like after. Or I basically that. at first I was like, well, like this this date, I guess, could be the start. And they're like, are you conceiving on this date? Is this when we can expect the child? Or is this the beginning of trying? Like they wanted all say. the details. You don't Brian know what date like, you're ovulating. <laughs> yeah, I was like, and, but it was so funny. They were tag teaming. They're like, wait, are we getting the baby on that date or are you conceiving on that date? And I was like, I like that, how that's just the date that we're, we're going to not. That's just my date of like the earliest time that we would actively yeah, try not start. to. The the fact that it's the a long time from now, by the way, when they get the baby. Yeah. When do we when get the baby? Get <laughs> Um, Which just reminded me of that. So forward. I, I love would it. really love if you and I synced up because you and I, our periods are synced. I mean, mine's been all weird because I've got it three times mm -hmm. this month, but we should find out, make sure our ovulation days are on the same day because that's, you can yeah. control that. And um, I'm synced with the moon. Yeah. So conceive on the same day. That would be awesome. That would be, you know what? That would actually be, I feel like that would happen to us. I'll tell you. Yes, I'll tell should. you in a few years when I'm like, okay, ready to go. All right, go time. Um, I have the aura ring, and it tracks your Ooh. temperature. And so, when you're ovulating, your temperature rises. So now I can use this to know. Oh, interesting. Do you run hot or do you run cold? You know how Let's ninety. What's, what are What are we all supposed to be like? Ninety eight point six or whatever. I think I run cold. My temperature is. Let's see. Yeah, I'm almost always 97.4 or 97.6. I don't know why I'm, I'm so 97.25 at this very moment. 
there we go. Neither of us are pregnant. <laughs> and you're not going to get that news on Two Girls, One Ghost for some time. So <laughs> unless we're unless the koala prediction is true for Sabrina. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> uh, okay. It's funny. We all it's funny. constantly talk about pregnancy, but it's not going to happen for a while. I feel us. like people have been like saying that about me for so long and I'm like I don't I don't know why do I give it's off gonna be pregnancy a joke until vibes? it's not yeah because you just talked about a baby for a while uh, yeah and you I do love and then babies. you're you would go to tarot readings and they'd be like I see a child yeah so it's been a part of our well, conversations yeah I'll have one eventually or maybe two or three I don't know we'll see mm-hmm. but until you already then, have a child her name is Leia Leia Yes. I thought you were going to say And we you. love her. <laughs> <laughs> Me. I'm your baby. A I'm big, baby. big baby. Be, I'm peanut baby. butter baby in this outfit. I'll be almond mm. butter baby. Um, okay. It's Valentine Day, Valentine's Day, our half anniversary. What better thing to do than read lovely, happy love stories, um, Valentine's Day stories, all of that. I want to start with um, perhaps a little twist on Valentine's Day. Oh, uh oh, we're we're immediately going dark, aren't we? Um, we're not actually. Oh, this is from our listener Sarah, and it's called "My Ex's Dead Bestie Followed Me to Have Sexy Time with Me." Oh. Okay. I love stories. Valentine's and Day and sexy time. So long as you, they're consensual. You know the first Don't time Don't like I, the incubus, succubus. No, 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 no. This seemed a little bit more consensual. And um, I very much did do a search for sex with ghost first when I saw that you put Valentine's Day theme. You did. <laughs> That was good. I should have done that. <laughs> How many do we have in the inbox? Not many. Not many. Not many. Okay. Well, if anyone else is at it, we'll, we'll maybe we'll have a little sex themed episode in the future. Yeah. So yes. Let us email us if you want to share it. Okay. Well, it just starts. I was trying to figure out a way to sum everything up for a subject line. And honestly, sure. Why not? Even though that sounds like a National Enquirer headline, but here goes. I debated writing this in at all because of how wild it has all been. But here I am, because who else am I going to share this with but you? I know how we've all laughed at the story of the lady marrying the pirate ghost and the amethyst lady who claimed to have sex with spirits, so I don't want people to reach out and send a psychiatrist after me. I've been no, listening. no. We laugh, but we're intrigued. Yeah. And also, we believe you. Yeah, I mean, we've never discredited these people for their experiences. It's more just like, oh, wow, they're like fully in this. Well, and it was also our first experience ever hearing about something like that. Yeah, agreed. Okay. I've been listening since the very beginning and you were all there for me in the group. Oh. Um, in addition, I am pagan and a witch and have been experiencing with spirits and have experience with spirits already. I'd seen orbs in my 20s and then a few years ago uh, adopted some haunted dolls, but nothing could have prepared me for the last few months. Here we go. In December, I met this guy who I'll call D for privacy. We were very drawn to each other immediately, and I received some very obvious signs that I was on the right path in meeting him. The first night over at his place, I had an unusual experience, though. I was kneeling on his floor in his room with a glass of wine in my hand, talking to him. When he got up and left the room, I suddenly became overwhelmed with emotion and began to cry. But it didn't feel like my emotions or my tears. I could feel myself crying, but I was really confused as to why. When he came back into the room, I was trying to wipe the tears away because I didn't want to look like the weird woman in his room randomly crying. It was strange and I'd never had that happen before. D had talked before about how he loved the energy at his place and how special it was to him there, so 
I summed it up to just some wild energy there or between us or some emotion released in me that I wasn't realizing. I don't know. Or well, let one, me let me say it could just be well, we're about to find out why. Yeah. But it just reminds me of you and Marblehead and a lot of and me and Marblehead and a lot of people who who go to Marblehead. Sometimes there's just astrocartography lines. There's just good, good energy in energy. a place. Yeah. But one night when I was at my place talking to him on the phone like we did every night, he started telling me about a friend of his. As he started talking about him, I felt a cool pressure on my back and shoulders, which I'd felt a few times before occasionally when one of my spirits in my house touched me. It didn't happen often with my girls, but when it did, I knew that feeling, and this felt like that. He went on and on about his friend named Tracy, telling stories about the two of them, and all the while the pressure remained strong and cool on my back and shoulders. He'd said his friend had transitioned, and I didn't understand what that meant, so after some time and wondering if that did mean what I was thinking it meant, because it certainly felt like a spirit at my back, I, I asked what he meant by transitioned, and he said it meant that his friend had passed away. And I knew it, and I knew from one of my best friends who is a medium that that's what it feels like when you kind of channel someone as well. I didn't really notice anything after that conversation, but one morning when I was over at his place still in bed and he was working a few feet over in his home office, I was slowly waking up, but just laying there relaxing and something weird started happening. I slowly started getting turned on, like a lot. Mm. It's very difficult to describe, um, but I'll just say it's like the effects of a vibrator. And then I was orgasming. I was laying there, surprised at having an orgasm without being touched, and was like, what the fuck just actually happened? Wow. D thought, D thought I was trying to get him back in bed with him, so I just kind of went with it, although I was very <laughs> confused. <laughs> Fast forward like a month, D and my relationship progressed a little too quickly, and while he's an amazing person and our energy and chemistry was amazing... We were both coming out of divorces and there were things of his personality and parenting styles that reminded me too much of my ex. And so I pieced out quickly upon realizing it, making a clean cut for my own sanity. But then that thing started to happen to me at home a few days later. I was lying in bed one night and suddenly was feeling things. I don't know how detailed I can or should go on here. It's not that I was being held down or anything. I could move freely. It would literally feel like I was getting crazy turned on to the point of getting off, but with nothing touching me over and over again. And it's not like there's any thought, right? Like it's not like you're suddenly having a sexy thought that gets you intrigued. It's just random, out of the blue. Feeling, feeling, yeah. And knowing what I know about the spirit world, I figured that was what was happening, I had something happen similarly just once and woke up saying some weird foreign name over and over again as I was getting off a few years ago, and it never happened again. (laughs) Sarah! Uh, Oh, this just makes me think so much of of traveling souls and like, is this someone that you knew and had a relationship with in the past that's just presenting or is it just an opportunity for (laughs) the spirit and you're giving off the right receptive vibes and it's just like let's just see let's see where this goes like trevor from ghosts okay so sarah says as this was happening i would say out loud is this really happening and i would get an even stronger orgasm as if to say you're really doubting this right now it was wild (laughs) I usually take sleeping pills and I had an allergy test one week and couldn't take the pills, which is when I really noticed this the most because I couldn't sleep. I still had no clue what was happening at this point. Had I attracted an incubus, a sex demon who just seemed to be kindly into getting me off? Were there any downsies to this? Because in all honesty, I'm a 30-something full-time working mom with a crazy sex drive and I'm super limited with how much time I can date and I'm super picky. So... I'm guessing Sarah's saying she enjoyed it. Yes. Ultimately. Manifesting more of that for you. Yeah. Sarah. Ultimately, I ended up using my pendulum after a few days to ask the spirits attached to my dolls what was happening and who this was. I asked if it was a demon. 
No. Is it human? Yes. I have protection laid down around the house, so I'm careful with my pendulum and place and my place so that I wasn't sure how anything would have gotten in that meant harm. Then I remembered feeling this happen that one time over at Dee's house too. And I thought to ask if it was his friend, Tracy. Yes. <gasps> oh, okay. So the dead bestie of a guy you used to see is hanging around to have sex with me. This is too much. Wow. Well, thank goodness that she broke up with her ex because for a minute she was in a love triangle and didn't even realize yeah, it. Yeah, didn't even know. That week, I was off my sleeping pills. I noticed it the most because of my lack of sleep. It didn't happen as much after that, or I just fell asleep so quickly it either didn't happen or I didn't notice. But af but over the next few weeks, I was diagnosed with ADHD and began trying meds out. And I was able to see things clearly and have less anxiety for the first time in my life and look at a bigger picture of things. And all during this time, I started to notice something else. That cool, tingly feeling I get when a spirit is touching me was with me all the time. The more aware I became of it, the more obvious it was. Mostly, it was on my legs or on my thigh, sometimes on my back or arm. I asked if it was Tracy and asked it to squeeze my arm, and it did. I began to realize it was responding to me. I realized Tracy was with me all the time, and I had become, I guess, a medium along the way. Wow. We developed kind of a friendship over the weeks, and I realized he was initially interested in me because, okay, sure, I'm a decently attractive woman with a high sex drive, and as I later found out, did D did sleep with someone he had dated, so maybe this was a little I got you back kind of situation after death in a way, even though they ended up being good friends. So I guess Tracy, D slept with one of Tracy's girlfriends. Yes. Yes. So Tracy in the afterlife is like, I'm just going to wait for the opportunity to get you yeah. back for what you did. And maybe, you know, it seems like Tracy and Sarah have this bond. Um, yeah, there's an infatuation there. Yeah. Along Maybe it was way, from him to her initially, but yeah. Along the way, I think Tracy got to know me and became a big protective and actually enjoys being around me. I'm sure it feels nice to be acknowledged and listened to. When I feel down or overwhelmed at work, I feel him around my shoulders like a hug. Oh, oh, when I, oh my God, when I got, when I got pain in my arm and started fearing a blood clot because I had one in my other arm last year. I went to a quiet space at work and was almost spiraling into a panic attack when I could feel him all around me and the word safe over and over in my head. Oh, this, this is so sweet. I was having issues with a guy at work that I had been back and forth with that I kind of have a thing with. And after I told him off one weekend, I came back in and was trying to talk professionally to him and had a shot of cold shivers all over me like Tracy was trying to keep me away from him. So much so that my teeth were chattering, obviously, at, obviously, as I was trying to have a conversation with this guy at work. I had to tell Tracy that I appreciated the thought, but I did have to work with the guy and I could take it from here. At the same time, I can feel when Tracy is emotional about something as well. He responds yes to me when I ask him questions by making his touches more obvious. I figured out about when he was born this way, early 70s, and also a dime showed up on my desk that morning out of the blue, face up, with a 1970 on it when I came back to my desk. Oh. Oh, what a brilliant way to ask a spirit when they were born. Deliver me a penny, a nickel, a dime with the <laughs> date know. that you were born. The year. Uh, Sarah says, I started to realize how much he liked certain music, and so I would play it for him and feel his emotions. I... Knew then I was experiencing Tracy's emotions. I felt his emotions when talking about sunsets and asking if he can still view them the way I can now that he's on the other side. I ended up reaching out to Dee because Tracy wanted me to and we got together and talked about Tracy. I told him most of what was happening. I imagine she left out the sex stuff. <laughs> we had Tracy's favorite drink and I learned a lot more about him and saw pictures of him. It was really nice seeing all the pieces come together. 
It's my new normal now. Tracy's with me all the time. I always feel him here. And when I come home, I feel more chills when I say hello as I feel my other spirits now too. When I'm at work, I notice I feel more chills around certain people. One lady at work, I felt comfortable telling about Tracy that I feel some crazy waves of chills and something coming off and around her frequently. And when I told her, she told me that she had been praying to her ancestors. So I can tell based on what I feel around her, how much she's been talking to them or meditating. Wow. I feel like I'm never alone now. I always believe, but the power I have as a witch and now I guess as a medium that I'm working on growing daily and the friend I've made in Tracy, a person who I've seen videos and pictures of, which I keep one on my desk now, who is kind of like my guardian friend spirit with benefits. Now, I could have never believed. I mean, Sarah, I think you're kind of dating Tracy. I know. (laughs) I'm curious if it's still like, Sarah, do you still have a sexy time with Tracy? Yeah. How often? I mean, I want to know everything. So send me the details. Okay. Okay, Well, Sarah says, I know this story is wild. And every day, the last three to four months I've been living it has been just me shaking my head going, is this real life? Okay. Wait. So we need clarification. Does that mean they've been doing the deed for three to four months every day exploring each other for the past four months love you ladies see you on the other side sarah wow happy valentine's day sarah i hope you uh, and tracy have a nice date i know well that was two days ago so i hope you were treated well (laughs) (laughs) sounds like tracy does treat her gosh but also i mean just this whole thing is incredible but even more so than that just sarah's tapping into so many of her abilities like she's expanding so much with her own power and i just think that that's so incredible so not only is she now able to i mean she had the haunted dolls she has a lot of experiences but mm-hmm. now she's able to feel the presence of other people like coworkers, and understand how open they are and how much communication they have with the spirit world and get this sort of tingling buzzing feeling maybe that's why you tingle and buzz i don't know but i'm I'm alone a lot when i buzz i don't know actually alone (laughs) it's when like yeah when i'm doing yoga or whatever and then there's a spirit over me that's like let's do acrobatic yoga and they're just like hovering over or trying to hold my hands doing a handstand above me and i'm like wow my hands are tingling no weird but fascinating i mean incredible so cool so cool i have a million more questions (laughs) but i feel like a lot of them are probably we'll set up a call (laughs) with sarah see this is why I'm telling you, we need people to put their phone numbers at the bottom of their emails and we'll we call a friend. We need campfire stories to start again. That's exactly what campfire – I know. It's that's campfire true. stories. Because then we can ask We need questions. to find a home for it. Yeah. That'll be our, yes. our, our goal. By, by Q2, we'll figure out a way to do it. Q2. Look at you business speak. Spend too much time in the corporate world. <laughs> All right. What's your lovely okay. Valentine's Day story? So I went – well – I guess it's still very much on theme, but sometimes some of my stories involve family members, stuff like that, but still very much Valentine's Day oriented. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my first one, this is from Jess. It's called Valentine's Water Stain Heart, a hello from beyond. Hi, ghostesses. I absolutely love your show. So to get right to it, my dad passed away in 2015 from a heart attack at age 62. He was a great father to us six kids, and he and my mom gave us a great life with focus on family time and just being together. His Sunday barbecues were his favorite times with everyone there in the backyard. Mm. He bought my mom some unfurnished Adirondack chairs for their backyard before he passed, with the intention for him to paint them, but he never got to. So in February, I decided to paint them for my mom in his honor. Oh, that's so sweet. I was, that's so sweet. I was working on them on Friday the 13th, and I left them to dry on the side of the house for another coat for the next day. When I woke up the next day in my room that was next to the side of the house, I heard a weird gurgling sound. My mom heard it too while she was in the bathroom next to my room. We went to go check the side since that's where the sound came from. 
and we walked out to a water stain on the concrete in the shape of a heart. It was February 14th, the first Valentine's Day without my dad. That spout, oh. that spout that it came from was rusted and had no handle anymore and hasn't been turned on or even leaked in about 20 years and never has since that day. We sadly had to sell the house since it was too much for my mom alone, but we took it as a comforting sign and have so many amazing memories of family in that house that my parents provided for us. Always appreciate those you have around and keep up the great content. Jess. And I'm going to show you guys the the heart. Oh, wait. <gasps> oh, that's How so sweet. sweet. And from us, that's what, I mean, it would be special regardless to, to come out to this, but it's just the details of he chose the spout yeah. that has never leaked, that doesn't have a handle, hasn't been working in 20 years to ensure that they would get the message. This isn't a mistake. It is February 14th and I'm sending you guys my heart. I just got chills. It's so sweet. It's so sweet. sweet. And just, uh, I, you know, love, love. I know. Love, love. And it's hard, like holidays after someone passes, they're so hard, each one. I know. So I love that he, he gave a sign and that they were together yeah. and that Jess did this thing for her mom too the day before, which was to finish the project the chairs. her dad had an always intended to do so that they could sit in the space that he loved the most in his Adirondack yeah. chairs and enjoy each other's company. And he obviously loved that gesture too and sent sent a heart. I know, it's so sweet. So sweet. So this one is more of like a traditional sweet story, less sexy. Um, You know, I had to do a little bit of both. Yes. It is from our listener, Lauren. Hi, ladies. My name is Lauren, and I'm a longtime listener, like, from the very beginning. <laughs> Y'all are just killing it, and it's amazing to see how far you've come. This story is a heartfelt one, and I'm not going to lie, I cried while writing it. So my papa passed away on January 2nd, 2021, and he was truly the most amazing guy I have ever known. So losing him hit my family and I really, really hard. It Aww. still hurts. Well, I got married to my now husband in October of 2021. It was one of the happiest days of my life, but also so sad because my papa wasn't there to see it. But I know he is so happy. He absolutely, he absolutely loved my husband and was so excited to have him officially become a part of the family. So... About one month after my wedding, I had a dream where I was slow dancing with my papa. We were dancing down the hall in his old house where my grandma still lives. He told me that it was because we couldn't dance at my wedding, but now we were. Oh, oh well, my heart! I woke up. I know. <laughs> Obviously happy, but also so sad. I immediately texted my mom and my grandma, and they both loved hearing about the dream and the visit I had with Papa. My grandma then told me that that night she also had a dream. It was a dream where she woke up and was confused about why Papa wasn't in the bed with her. She said then that she knows why. It was because he was down the hall dancing with me. What? Oh. Oh my gosh. See you on the other side, Lauren. How beautiful. Which, ugh, that's so sweet. And I also feel like that means that her grandma also dreams of her papa a lot. And like in her mm -hmm. dreams has papa in bed with her. And because he wasn't there that night, he was dancing with Lauren. It also makes me wonder, too, if maybe he said something in the past, like when they're in bed together at night talking in her dreams, if he's like, mm. I won't be able to come tomorrow night, my love, because I need to go have a dance with Lauren. Isn't it That's so, so sweet. I, I love know. this story. Ugh. I know. Man. Visits from loved ones, they really just... They I know. Me. It's just so sweet. And I also feel like I get... I get got by like any story about weddings and loved ones coming to visit at weddings. Like to me, that is just 
Whew. It's so Cue special. tears. Cue the tears. Oh, man. Okay. Well, I have a story for us to end on. Okay. It's Valentine's Day. And this is from Jack. I'm an actor. One year on my birthday, I had an audition for a Shakespeare show, and I met the most bewitching woman I have ever seen. Oh. Her name was Lisa, and we connected instantly. Over the next few years, we became good friends, often working together in various shows, hanging out, etc. The flirtation was always there, yet neither of us acted on it. We were always just missing each other romantically. The timing just wasn't there. Until it was. We had spent the summer of 2014 doing Shakespeare as we had pr- as we had previous years, only this time we had both recently gone through intense breakups. We found solace in talking with each other, helping each other through these difficult times, and one night, after hours of talking, we kissed as the sun rose. Okay, romantic. Romance. Little Romeo and Juliet. I know, I like that it's Shakespeare because there's a lot mm-hmm. of like love themes in there. Yes. The next few weeks were a whirlwind. We lived more life in one month than some couples live in a lifetime. There were tango lessons, karate nights, dinner every night, meeting each other's family, (sighs) and many more sunrise conversations, dreaming about the future, figuring out where to go next. Wow. One night. Oh, my gosh. I know. this This is a movie. Yes. One night after a dear friend's birthday party, we were sitting outside under the biggest, brightest moon you've ever seen, surrounded by a halo that was even bigger and brighter. It was under this light that Lisa looked me in the eyes and said, you know, I love you. Always have. I hate that it took us this long to find each other, but I am so grateful for the time that we've been spending together. I can honestly say I've never been happier in my life. If I were to die tomorrow, it would be okay because I got to experience happiness (laughs) happiness like no other. Okay, that is... (sighs) If someone said that to me, I would tears. <laughs> yeah. I told her I loved her too and couldn't wait for the future that we were starting. Two hours later, we were rushing to the hospital after Lisa had a massive brain aneurysm. What? <gasps> Stop. I give you this all is this not backstory. Where I thought this was going. I know. <laughs> I give you all this backstory to understand the events that follow. Two days before her aneurysm, Lisa explained to me who each and every one of her brothers and sisters were for when we eventually met over the holidays. Lisa had also been directing a show. The night of our friend's birthday party, she was talking about how her cast was so good. I don't even need to be there anymore. Oh my gosh. She said. <gasps> Did oh, she chills. know what was coming subconsciously? Especially the- family. Sorry. I could die tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I know. To say all that within 48 hours. It also, it is interesting, some of the things that people say before they pass. It's almost like some people do somehow subconsciously know. Like, the notes they leave, the last things people say, it's haunting once they're gone. Yeah. Wow. Lisa's family... Lisa's family came in from all over to be with her. She had prepared me for meeting them without even realizing it. As each sibling and family member arrived at the hospital, I knew exactly who they were. Some believe dragonflies are fairies trapped in the real world. They are signs of rebirth, hope, and good things to come. One of Lisa's favorite roles was Titania, the fairy queen in A Midsummer Night's Dream. So Mm. you can imagine my surprise to see swarms of dragonflies outside of Lisa's hospital windows swarms? the entire time she was there. They oh, never wow. left. It was as if the fairies were rallying for their queen. <laughs> Lisa held on until all of her family and friends were there by her side, even showing promising improvement right up until the end. Oh, the night is- before she passed, her mother had asked me about a necklace that she had given Lisa many years before. It was a little protection charm, and I explained that Lisa had told me about it, but had not been able to find it since she started dating her abusive ex. That Mm -hmm. night, I stayed at Lisa's, and I asked her to help me find that necklace in hopes that it could bring her some protection. I dumped out her jewelry box, and there it was, right on top, tangled with some costume jewelry. 
Oh my gosh. It was kismet. In my dream that night, I was Lisa in her hospital bed. I was oh. opening her eyes. I was moving her arms. It was a really strange out-of-body experience. And when I awoke, I had hoped that she could pull through this. She was given, she had given us all a little hope as we had all dreamt of her. Wow. We went back to the hospital. We put the necklace on her. We played her favorite music and read passages aloud from her favorite book, Alice in Wonderland. She had started breathing on her own during the night for the first time all week. So the family decided that it was time to take her off of the breathing machine. Mm. There were some complications when they started removing the tubes and Lisa died that afternoon, oh. surrounded by those who loved her most. The ICU happened to be in the same wing as a maternity ward, so we could hear Mary had a little lamb every time a new child was born. Within seconds of the doctors announcing Lisa's death, Mary had a little lamb started playing. Over the next few months, I started having the strangest dreams. Dreams of alternate realities where I had died and Lisa had lived. A world where neither of us had died. Her 40th birthday party with our friends and family gathered on the beach. Our wedding. There were endless possibilities while I slept. Why are you trying to kill me? <laughs> I'm sorry. I have such bad goosebumps. It's just so beautiful. It's so pain is beauty. So sad. Oh my gosh. Many mornings I awoke and I tried to call her only to realize at the last second that I couldn't. Is it possible for these other worlds to exist alongside our own? Yes. Exact, exactly the same, but with the slightest differences? Or was this Lisa communicating with me from the other side, letting me know that she's okay? Every now and again, I have an experience that I know is Lisa messing with me. There was a month where every time I got home from work or rehearsal, her photo would be on the ground directly in front of the door, despite oh. me making sure it was secure to the wall when I left. The dreams have faded over the years, but whenever I'm unsure of an audition or worried about the future, Lisa pops by in the form of a dragonfly, letting me know everything is going to work out just fine. Thank you for keeping this space for us to share our experiences. All my best, Jack. Okay, well... <sighs> Jack, I'm so sorry for your loss. Yeah. I am so confident that you and Lisa are soulmates and you will yes. be with each other in every life moving forward, that you have been with each other in every life in the past. And I do want to believe that there are these alternate universes and parallel timelines that are coexisting at the exact same time as our own where the realities are different. Yes. You I are so believe still together. That. And I feel like this is just the most beautiful example of bonded souls. Like they are traveling souls, regardless of their future lives, reincarnation, alternate parallel yeah. universes, timelines, what have you. They're together. And whether they get to make it to a 40th birthday, whether they get to make it to a wedding, whether Jack passes first, whether they have mm -hmm. multiple children or no children or yeah. have a farm or are famous <laughs> actors, like, I like they're together living life yeah. regardless of, of how it is. They get to meet each other and they get to experience each other's presence always, infinitely. I agree. I also love that you slipped in have a farm because that's very much you, your... <laughs> Yeah, but then after I Through said that, I was lens. like, wait, but I don't think they want to farm. Or famous actors. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, wow. But two, I mean, just the fact that Lisa was just so content and so full. Her last month was so full of life and so full of love and everything felt yeah. perfect. And she almost, it sounds like the way that she was describing, like, I don't even need to be there. Or if I die tomorrow, I, this is the happiest I've ever been. She was already this sort of ethereal being, kind of transcending, like had experienced everything and just was gently floating yeah. away. Oh. Wow. It's so sad, especially like the comments she made the day mm -hmm. of. And the dragonflies all outside of her hospital window. Yeah. I mean, that's spooky in the best way possible totally and two 
Jack feeling like he was in Lisa's body, which makes me feel even more like they are so incredibly bonded that they're basically one person, right? Like their so souls are tethered. Have you ever heard um, – you may have even told me this, but like um, – or maybe I read it, but basically your soul like is fractured and there's another person in the world who like completes your soul. So like it's almost like your soul is one. Have we talked about this? No. No. Did I have a dream about this? I don't know. But basically this idea that you are not really complete until you meet this other person who like has the other part of your soul and they are not really complete until you meet like they meet you and your souls wow unite. that's so interesting it does make me wonder too about is it is it one to one like two people meet or could it be where like in certain lifetimes you're you're sent to earth and you have four missing parts and that's completed yeah. by your four best girlfriends that you meet in college yeah, or something or like that. your family. You know? Yeah, yeah, there's different people and different players that, that can fill that part of you. And then also, similarly, like if if we are energy, if our souls are energy, when we leave our bodies, our energy could split, right? So we tech, like could we technically, our spirits be reincarnated in multiple beings? And is that why we find each other hmm. and are like – like magnetic towards each other's souls oh, we need to like come back together we could be multiple people at once Ugh, i don't like that <laughs> i don't know i mean is that is that a twin thing maybe is that yeah i mean is that why we you and i are telepathically connected in yeah. some way and wear the same jacket because apples and the number 17 we're spot on <laughs> That was episode 208, if you're wondering what we're talking yeah. about. <laughs> <laughs> what is this gibberish? Apple's 17. It's called a callback to a totally different aliens. episode. Um, uh, yeah. This is beautiful. Uh, happy well, Valentine's Day. Well, there's a lot Day. of love in the world. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. We love you so much. Yes. So please know that. And yes. there's so much to explore in the world, so many hauntings and visitations that we've yet to experience yet to hear so there's so much to look forward to in the next year yeah. and we're just happy that you guys are here with us can i ask you a question yeah is someone in your apartment with you right now um my neighbor left okay that that was the noise of their keys okay and the, i just like wanted door. to make sure because they were, i like heard a <laughs> and i was like hmm. yeah Gotcha. It okay. was the neighbor. Just clarifying. Good, good, good. Um, Which I'm also, glad that we just told kind stories because usually when that happens when we're recording and we're we're jump. talking about like terrifying, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but this time I'm soothed a little bit. My heart is warm. Yeah. I also want to clarify that it is Valentine's Day, but that's not about romance. You don't need a partner to celebrate no. Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is about love. It is about friendship. It is about looking at your life i mean i don't know if it's about this but like i love corinne and valentine's day is a very important day for us for many reasons it's our half anniversary but it's also because we're just besties and it's fun to uh remind each other of our love yeah i don't celebrate valentine's day outside of celebrating you and no. my half podcast anniversary <laughs> like, that's it i, I don't do the anything else I celebrate the day after Valentine's Day um, because it's cheaper. It's cheaper. And also I feel like Valentine's Day is just a good reset for us to look at the world and think about the things that we love and appreciate and get to be around us. Like I love plants and I'm so lucky that I have a few plants. I love clean air. I'm so lucky that I get to have access to places like Vermont and Maine and stuff where I feel like I can breathe really easy. I feel like it's a yeah. it's a time to just be appreciative and Reflect. recognize what is around us. Can I tell you a story that really um to end this on a really sad note? Oh, okay. <laughs> I I'm saying all these nice things about Valentine's Day, but I have a really really like form formative terrible memory of Valentine's Day. 
Aww. And I may have told this on the podcast before, but my very first boyfriend that I thought was so cute. Should I out him because he was a jerk to me? Sure. I'll just say his first oh, name. Was him. His name was Dylan. And he was so cute. I was in sixth grade and my friend Corey was like, just ask him out. We had our lockers like right next to each other because our last names were, you know, alphabetically. And Corey was like, just ask him out, like call him, ask him out. So I did. And he was like, sure. And then the next day at school, I sure, sure. The next day at school, I'm like in, this is like, so it's like Carrie almost. I'm in the gym locker room getting dressed for gym. And I hear like the mean girls being like, she, he's only dating her because he has a crush on her sister, which everyone loved my sister. She was the cool two years older, eighth grader. Um, very beautiful. And I like got so sad. And then I like, you know, sixth grade, I wasn't talking to Dylan. Like we was just like, he's my boyfriend. No, yeah, talk. you don't talk when you're you dating in middle school. Oh, if someone and, tried to hold my hand, I would break up with them. Oh, don't touch me. <laughs> Whoa, so, you're, you've overstepped. <laughs> don't speak to me. So then Valentine's Day is a couple days later and Dylan gives me these stuffed animals. And I'm like, oh, that's really nice. Like, thank you. And my mom even took me to like I think we were in CVS and she was like, do you want to get him a Valentine's Day present? And I got him this like cute box of chocolate with a little thing. I got so excited. I paid for it myself. I was like, romance, love. Um, You were ready and, for it. And then, so he gave me the stuffed animals and then we're both at our locker. Again, this is like out of a movie. We're both at our locker. His locker door is open so he doesn't see me. And he's talking to one of his friends. He's like, oh, yeah, like I don't even like her at all. Like my mom reminded me it was Valentine's Day and I went into my brother's closet and found these like stuffed animals and I just gave them to her. Sabrina, I'm so sorry. And then I went into biology class I want and her cried. I hug you. And Mrs. Brown was like, it's okay. This is why we can't have kids because it will shatter me when they experience something like this. And everyone does. Yeah. Whether yeah. it's Valentine's Day or heartache with a friend. I know. Ugh. Yeah. It's so sad. I'm sorry. But I survived. Here I am. Hey, but whatever, Dylan. Now you get to spend Valentine's Day with thousands of people. Here, on I, the podcast. Should I look him up right now? Let's see. What is he <laughs> doing? Do you have a successful podcast, Dylan? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Everyone has one, right? Okay. How do Everybody I Everybody has a podcast. Okay. I'm going to go to this girl who I went to um, middle school with, who I follow. And let's see. Dylan. We should have just okay. used this whole time to look up our exes and our exes. Back on what they're doing. Shoot. I don't know who would follow him. And it's like his last name is kind of um, like common. Eh, that's okay. Well. I'll report back. Wait. Yeah. Oh, wait. Found him. Oh, private. Oh. <laughs> Shoot. Should I follow him? I'm going to no. follow him. I just follow him. Up. <laughs> I need to know. It was so long ago. <laughs> okay, I'll keep you posted. I need to know. Oh, oh man. Does he still think about me? <laughs> <laughs> you should DM him a picture of, of like CVS chocolate and be like, remember this. Remember. <laughs> Did it even mean anything to you? <laughs> me squashing it with my foot or like taking a hammer to it. <laughs> this is what you did to me. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh, okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for being here. You can support our show in a variety of ways. Email us your ghost stories to two girls, one ghost podcast at gmail.com. Write and review us on iTunes. Word of mouth is huge. So if you tell people about our podcast, that would be awesome. Fantastic. Uh, and follow us on all the social media channels. We've got YouTube, we have Instagram, we have TikTok. All the things, a Discord channel. Um, we have merch if you want to rock some TGOG merch. I live in it all summer long. Yep. What else? Um, I don't know. Thanks. 
Thanks for listening. And thank you to our editors at Fire Digital, uh, Aiden Manning and the entire team for editing our podcast and our YouTube videos and all of that. Thank you. And we will see you on, on the, the other, other side. side.